All right, everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be checking out these two generators, one from Predator and the other one from Champion, which is a dual fuel. Both of these generators are very close as far as price and as far as the specs that they run. One is about $850. The other one runs about $1,000, depending on where you find it. And then as far as the specs goes, they're both rated right about 25 amps with the, you know, Champion being just slightly over. So we're going to go over the weight. We'll check out the sound. We'll go over a full load test and basically, you know, just kind of see which one might be a better option for you. All right, let's get started. All right, we're going to start with a Predator, and we're looking at 25 amps and 3,000 running watts. And basically running a 212cc motor, running 87 octane fuel. And it does have a larger 2.6 gallon tank, which is kind of nice at 57 dB. So, and we'll also take a look at the Champion specs here. And if you look on the right side, the gasoline at 3,100 watts at 25.8 amps. And you can see the engine is a little bit smaller at 192 cc's. And our sound level is going to be right about 59. One thing though about the propane is that you do have other options to run it, which is kind of nice. You have a big tank like this on the side of your house. You can hook a line right to it and or you could just use a five gallon bottle like this if you're an rv person you can also use the big seven gallon tanks as well or hook it up to uh, basically the barbecue line on the trailer with a special hose so we'll take a look at the face plates real quick on the champion you can see the pull cord there and this is your selector switch this is where you're going to select gas or propane flip it up like that slide the collar back hook up your hose you're good to go for propane your choke which you only use that choke on gasoline not propane and you have your run and start switch right there, and then your eco switch right down below it. The red switch that's over on the far right, that's gonna energize your battery and allow you to use that electric start feature, which is nice. And then if you look at the Champion's RV Ready Plug, I do like that feature. It is kind of nice if you're running an RV versus this is where you might hook up your house to it. It's a certain type of extension cord. But if you do get this TTR plug, this is basically just an adapter to hook up a 30 amp service plug. And if you look at the breakers, one thing I do notice on the Predator is that you get these weather protection caps. And these just spin off like so. And look at that. You just spin it right onto the Champion, and there you go. Now you have weather protection caps. I don't know why they didn't give you any. Kind of odd, but, you know, it's probably something you could pick up real cheap somewhere. You have your 120-volt plug there and a 12-volt socket, which on the Champion, it's kind of a nicer feature. The Predator, I don't have anything for that, but parallel plugs down there, and these parallel plugs are on the side. Again, with a weather protection cap, which is kind of nice just to keep, you know, dust and dirt out of it. But, uh, you know, you could probably buy something. They both have a grounding lug for when you do parallel it. And again, the weather protection caps are nice on the eco switch and on the starter switch. On your selector switch here for start and run, that has an automatic choke. So you just put it there for five seconds, switch it to run, and ready to go. If you want to check your hours, just push the button there. That's kind of for checking your hour service meter. And battery boxes in the front. Champion has it on the side. You have a little wheel lock down there, and we'll go ahead and start some of the testing with the weight test first. So we'll just kind of zero out our little scale here real quick. And both of these generators, I ran them completely out of fuel. And so the only thing that is in it is the oil and the battery. So you're always going to have that in there when you're lugging these around. And uh, you might even have gas in the Predator. So that's one nice thing about the, uh, you know, dual fuel on the Champion is you don't have to have any gas in it. You just hook up a propane bottle. So again, if you're hooked up to your trailer, kind of a nice feature. So 100 pounds for the Predator. And we'll go ahead and do the same test with a Champion generator. And I didn't do anything funny with this test. This is really just how it came out. And I was kind of surprised. I was like, wow, 100 pounds flat for both. That was kind of uh, interesting. So I, I reweighed them several times just to make sure. And honestly, that's just kind of how it came out. So we'll take a look at the generator size here real quick. All right, so if we take a look at the size of each of these generators, you can see the Champion is a little bit smaller. It doesn't sit nearly as tall, um, which is good and bad. Um, when you're loading in the back of a truck, that's where you'll find it's better because you can get it up on your shins and throw it in there with a Predator being taller. It ends up being to where you can't get it on your shins so much to throw it in the back of your truck. And if you have, you know, these new three-quarter tons, the, the tailgates are just so high. So lifting it up and in and out of the truck, it's... It's kind of a chore at 100 pounds, and more likely you're going to have gas in it, so you might have another 5 or 10 pounds, and it all adds up. Anyway, so this thing moving it around is not quite as easy with the little wheels, and I got the little wheel lock stuck there, so it's kind of like, eh, it's jammed. But anyway, as you can see there, it's not too big of a deal to unlock that. But And then when it comes to lifting the Champion, again, it, it feels about the same. It's maybe a little tougher because it's slow, but when you want to push this thing around or take it somewhere, well, there you go. All right, so 23 feet away is how we're going to do our sound check. 
And we're going to start with a champion and the eco mode is going to be off. So we'll go over to the other side where the sound meter is and that's at 5 feet high. And we'll take a look here and one thing I did notice is that when this was running I didn't think it was as loud as it was just kind of you know after hearing several generators. But 73 dB was a little surprising. I was thinking high 60s. So we'll, we'll turn it on eco mode and see if we can get some better numbers for sure. And after letting it run and doing this test a couple times, it definitely was a lot better. It would have been nice to see it another dB or two quieter, but overall it's still not that bad. I've heard, I've heard louder for sure. So eco on, 63.2. And then if you turn the exhaust away, people were asking me, how come you always have the exhaust facing you? Well, that's because basically that's the loudest point of the generator you're going to hear. If you turn it or walk to the side of it, it's only going to be quieter, so that's a benefit. But, you know, for we're throwing it up here on the video, we'll we'll turn it and kind of take a look. And you can see 61.5. And I would aim it towards the fence, but it would probably just echo back and wouldn't do any good. So sideways was pretty good because then it shoots down my side yard there. All right, so we're going to now start off with a Predator. And one thing I want you to listen to is you hear the wheel lock? It's not locked, but even with it locked, I still got a lot of rattle. And it was real annoying. So... I unlocked it, shoved this rag in there, made a world of difference, so that would definitely be one thing I would fix right away. It's not hard, you know, just gotta figure out something to do to keep that thing from rattling so much, and it does make it a lot quieter, as you notice. And one thing with the Predator, too, is that I did notice the idle seems a lot lower with the Eco off or on, so that I think that made a big difference as far as our sound levels, because you can see the Champion was over 10 dB higher with the Eco off. And now with the Eco on, they're both a lot closer, but the Predator does do quite a bit better, and I think that helps uh, due to that low idle. So as you can see, after we let this run, basically going to be looking at pretty much 60 dB right off the bat, and the Champion is at 63.2. So Now that's actually not double as far as the human perspective hearing part of it. It is on a sound pressure level meter, but um, you know, perspectively it, it isn't double. And if we turn the exhaust again, we're going to lose a whole nother dB this way. Which, uh, you know, they're pretty close. They're, the spread is not so much there. But anyway, we'll get on to the load test and kind of get this video going. I don't like those wheels, <laughs> so I'd probably change those out right away. But that's going to be our test meter, kind of show us, uh, you know, what we're doing inside as we add some load to it. So this is a 30 amp trailer. And basically I have the converter running that's, you know, kind of what's charging the battery and, and running all your DC lights and stuff. We turn on the fridge to the AC side, that gives us a couple more amps, and then we'll load it pretty good with this 1500 watt heater. As you can see as we bump it up, you can hear the generator now kind of starting to kick up an RPM. Yeah, now you can kind of see the amps and the volts kind of settle down a little bit. We'll kind of multiply those guys, get us a little bit more of a true number. You can see, kind of close to 2000 watts almost, but Let's go find ourselves some more power. So go over here to the microwave. And we'll add some power to this guy. Now this is gonna be about another 11 amps, so roughly. And if we take a look at our meter again and we multiply those numbers, running 3200, so now we are over because you can see that that light is flashing. So we are overloaded currently because remember it's 25 amp rated. And you don't want to do this to your generator. You can damage things. So, but for testing and and for fun, this is hey, this is just me. This is what I do. But anyway, this little heater guy here, this is going to be about another almost three amps. And I'll, I'll throw a link up here that way you guys can take a look at this heater if you want. This this thing is really great. It dries your towels and all kinds of stuff. But now you can see that light is really flashing quick, and we're you know almost pushing 30 amps basically so let's go find a couple more amps so we'll turn our fan on high and this is going to jump at about, about three amps um it, it's it's about two and a half running once it gets going but now you can see that light is basically full on and you hear the generator out there running top speed and with the light on normally you're going to be running about oh 10 to 15 seconds before this thing shuts off and you can see it's even got a little voltage drop there uh, under 114 that's usually where you want to be is 114 and above but and it shuts off 
and so it did a really great job and, and normally like i said you don't want to do that but uh, we're going to get the predator out of here and get the champion in and one thing i didn't do with the champion is run the propane if you guys want to see the full setup and test on it which it does a really really good job on propane it's almost identical to running it on gas i'll put a link up here if you want to see the full setup and full test and some other cool features that that generator has it is kind of cool so we'll do the same test again converter is running Turn on the fridge back to the AC, get another 5 amps to start, and we'll get the heater going again. Alright, get that thing over to medium, and we'll switch it to high. And we'll add up those numbers here in just a second, after it calms down a little bit. And so we're looking almost at exactly 120 volts, and last time it was about 16.4 amps, and... Um, just a little bit more watts, but still it's close enough. It's, you know, because there are some variables sometimes in these tests, so you don't want to take every single number exactly literal, so there is some room for error. And we'll fire up the microwave, get another 11 amps on there, so. All right, so we'll head back here, get that other power again. And one thing with the Predator that I noticed is that when I did load it certain ways, it would shut off at different amperages versus the Champion was real consistent on how it would shut off. The Champion would get to 29.9, 29.85 or whatever, and it would always shut off. It was real consistent at where it wanted to close, and it was always about 115 volts or more slightly. But And as you can see here, when it does shut down, boom, there's the difference so just to give perspective but you know so it's not always about the max amount of watts anyway i hope you guys liked the video make sure to like and subscribe